All right, so this will be my first uh, instructional video. Hope it's not terrible. Hope my voice doesn't bother everyone. Um, let's see. I'm going to be showing you guys how I do outlines, templates for guns. Pretty fairly easy process, and I'm sure there's a better way to do it, but this is the best way i found for myself to do it. It's quick and it's easy. All right, so what I end up doing is whatever gun I, I'm making a template for, I get an image off of Google. I just Google image search. Um, this was a friend of mine's, and um, I just searched the exact model of his gun, found a good square picture, filtered it down to large images only so it had decent resolution that I could zoom in on and get detail. It's going to be pixelated. That's okay. Basically, you want a good square face-on image. Um, I open this up in Adobe and the first thing I do is I grab my rectangle tool I found the outer edges of my template I just basically draw a rectangle I want to find the outer edges as far out as I'm gonna go I come over here to color no fill outline is gonna be black so once I draw my rectangle I zoom in and I kinda of fine-tune the length far as I want it to engrave that looks pretty good there bottom can come down some overall it's a fairly square image I mean it's just a little bit off and that's okay that's what you're looking for and if you have to see how it goes down on this end so let's just go ahead and bring that back up most of the time these images are pretty square and it's okay if you're a little bit off the bottom there you can always drag this one down I'll show you in just a moment as far as the top goes I was gonna line it up at that that point there but I see that there's a break here and here and it would look better to be dropped down just a touch we're gonna to do it about right there It'll leave a little bit of those serrations up so once I get my outline pretty much boxed off the way that I want it what you can do is you go and get your direct select tool and you just start editing one node at a time all four corners bring that in as far as you want and this is all personal I mean whatever you feel looks best um, and, and of course whatever the customer wants we're going to bring this node back just a little bit too alright so once that's done pretty much got your basic template done now you want to fine tune all these little points your little notches and this front deal up here so what I use is add anchor point tool if you don't have it on here you can always add um, more things here you click on this little three dots down at the bottom and you can select the tool and just drag it over here in your your quick menu but I use add anchor point and I usually start at my I square a spot so see here we have a line that comes down and then breaks over we have a little lump here that's about it so I'll come as close as I can out get my direct select tool again we'll just kind of line that up and that's a little bit too far sometimes I have I have this uh, smart guides enabled that helps a lot uh, with lining things up that's the little pink line that shows up so that's a little bit far out for me um, I would bring this back a touch there we go that looks pretty square now I'll add another anchor point where it breaks over again right here again get the direct select tool bring this back line it up you just want it on the inside edge of the image like I said it's a little pixelated that's okay now here what I'll do instead of adding multiple points to get around that curve what I'll do is I'll just add one right here in the apex of that curve get your direct select tool again drag this out a ways and then you'll have a little dot appear here if you make a, a good angle you can just drag that dot back it makes a good little curve probably bring that down just a touch and soften that up a little bit as well so now we pretty much have that line there so that's done so now 
For this, the way that I used to do it is I would add multiple anchor points across here and drag them out and try to make it circular, and I figured out a way easier way. Um, so for this, I kind of want to bring that down some. Get that a little closer to the bottom. For this, you'll add three anchor points. For any of these notches like this, your takedown notches, uh, that's what I call them. You'll want to add one on either side of the... Uh, the half moon, whatever you want to call that shape, half circle, and then one in the center, close to the center. I mean, it's you're eyeballing it. So you get your direct select tool again. You're going to bring this bad boy way up here until these lines on either side here have about an equal portion of space between them. Once you do that, you'll grab this little circle and pull them on down. And that's how you make that shape. It's fairly simple, pretty easy. It may look just a little bit off, but once you engrave it, you'll never notice it. If you do a good enough design, they won't notice. <laughs> so for your squares here, you're going to need four points. You're going to need one where you want it to end on either side. Then you're going to need two more on the inside. Anywhere on the inside will do. I just usually put them close together. Again, direct select. You're going to get that inside line, bring it up as far as you feel that is necessary. Do the same with the other side. Get them looking pretty square. Sometimes you can't find adjust unless you zoom in a good ways on Adobe. Especially with uh, smart guides on, it wants to snap, snap to grid, basically. So you'll get this as square as you feel uh, is necessary get these pushed in or out as far as you want according to how much space you want between there and I usually soften up the edges just slightly just to make it look a little less boxy now as far as the designs that are already on pistols uh, these small serrations and usually even the deep ones you can engrave over that it's just gonna it's gonna alter the design slightly in the different depths but it will go overall it will look right because uh, because you're doing it all in one pass, so it'll all be uh, fluid, fluid like I guess you would say. I usually engrave over like M&P nine shield and the little Smith and Wesson logo. I would usually engrave the design over it, but some folks may not want that. So, say they wanted to keep the Smith and Wesson design, you would go up here to this rectangle, click and hold, left click. Select the ellipses tool, come out and just start pulling and dragging to make a circle. Now if your circle isn't a circle, you hold shift, it'll make a perfect circle for you. Then you just size that up. Get it where you want it. And that's pretty much it for that. Now say you wanted to do that too, I call them exclusion zones. Um, say they wanted to keep M&P shield, you'd come back up here, hold your shape, select rectangle, just basically make a rectangle around it. And you'll want to size it up again just like you did with the template before. I usually try to cut these really close because um, I want as much canvas as I can possibly have for the design. And you can get your direct select tool kind of shape it up around the object and again if you don't want all this space here to be empty you can add a couple of anchor points say one here one here that should do it you'll bring this guy down same here bring him down line him up and there you go you have an exclusion zone so right now that shape has no color and feel so over here on your color you'll just select black and there we go so you have your exclusion zones now for the sake of this video I'm going to do away with this exclusion zone because I want to show more of the design so let's pick a design to go in here now I'm going to show you guys how I do designs um, it's probably not the best way but it works for me so let's say I'm looking here 
let's just say we're going to do the Star Wars image. It's rather complex, but it'll work. It's actually way too complex for this, but we'll do it just for the sake of doing it. All right. So I'm going to size this down. And when you're sizing down from the corner here, uh, hold shift while you do it. It'll keep the dimensions correct. Then I'm going to copy using control C. Go back to my template tab, click it, control V, that'll paste it in there. All right, so the color on this is red. I don't really want it to be red. I want it to be black like the rest of it. So um, we have our outline in front. We're just going to select black and that'll make it black. So here, what I would do, usually I lock my template. So we go to layers, we drop down this tab here, and we go all the way to the bottom. Normally that's where your template is if that's what you did first. Um, normally that's where it is for me anyways. And if you're not sure, just click on this little eye right here. It'll make it disappear. Click the box next to it that locks it. Same thing with your circle lock it. So now you can't click on it, you can't move it, you can't edit it, you can't do anything to it, it's safe. Um, now we'll just size this up just a little bit. Um, just going to put it out of proportion, that's okay. So there we have it, it's covering our template. So now what I normally do at this point, um, whatever design they want, um, Usually you can stretch it to make it fit without distorting the image too bad, but um, that's up to you and the customer. So at this point, I go up here to View, and naturally, I think Adobe uh, goes to GPU. So I go to Outline for this portion of it, which shows you basically what the CAD software is going to see. So at this point, as you can tell, your design is way outside of your boundaries. Um, and like I said, I'm sure there's an easier way to do this, like clip and mask and all that, but I haven't quite figured it out yet. So for me, as far as uh, vector designs and making it to where the lines still connect and you have no open nodes, um, this works really well. So you have an eraser tool in here. If you select it, I don't know what it defaults as, but you can do a circle or a line. But at this point, it doesn't really matter. Um, because here's a little trick you can what I normally do is I go right above your outline you just want to be right on the inside of your outline hold alt then left click and you can drag this line out and it'll erase once you release click you have to hold alt and the click button the whole time you're doing that um, now as you can see my design has made a new line that is connected everywhere and it's on the inside of my template except for down here my template is a little bit out of square and that's okay so what we do with that is we just do the same thing we'll just start right here hold alt drag it out and release and that should have done it yep so that separated our template and our design as you can tell right here. My design is actually still a little bit out. We're going to make this a little bit higher. We're just going to do it all in one go. Let's see now. Now our design is within our template. Okay. The same thing for the top. You just want to go right inside your template. Select. Hold Alt. Left click. Drag it over. And it erases it. And it puts your design within the boundaries of your template. And like I said, it closes all your nodes, so you don't have to worry about that. That's that's awesome. That's why I like using that eraser tool. Um, probably a little more complicated than it should be. That's okay. Now for these portions here, what I normally do is just use the circle. I'll just kind of go around it like that. A little bit off, but that's okay. You can you can fine tune it. If you don't like it, you can hit Control Z, and it'll erase it. So to get that better, you can double click on your eraser tab over here, and you can size this little guy down. 
then you have a little bit more fine adjustment to play with. And you'll just click and drag. That's pretty good. That's such a small scale that by the time you actually put it on the gun, you really won't notice it. Same thing over here. You'll want to size that down a little bit. Just do the same thing. Hold left click and drag it. Like I said, control Z. You can redo it if you don't like it. So there we go. Now as far as the ends go, if you double click this eraser, you see you have around this here. You can go down, you can actually get a straight line. And I've already preset this to the degree that I know this is. It's 74 degrees. I've done this template a few times. And it's pretty darn close. You can see my outline there. So basically, you'll just come right within the boundaries of your outline. Click and hold. Just drag it out. And then you see it and it makes a nice clean line within the boundaries of your outline. You can do the same thing over here with this little section here. And then for these finer sections at the top, that's a 90 degree. Just do that. Erase all this outside of here. You see how when you erase it, it connects the lines? That's just cool. So for this little portion here, we're going to make that round again and kind of small. That way you can just fine tune it a little bit. Make it smaller than that. Let's see. That's good there. And there you go. You have your outline within your bounds. Now the reason I went to outline mode, or outline view rather, GPU gives you a pretty good image. Um, it shows basically just a higher quality image. If you go to outline, that's what your CAD software is going to see. So if you go to outline mode and you only have a template there, then you've got a problem. Um, I would refer to Frag Out Design's video on how he makes his pattern fields work on uh, his templates. It's a method of going through and uh, expanding the image, merging, um, inversing, deleting, uniting. Um, all that stuff makes it show up in outline mode, which is what CAD software sees. So for your exclusion zone here, say your customer wanted to keep the little Smith & Wesson emblem there. Again, you'll go up here to your rectangle. You'll hold left click. You'll get your ellipses tool. There's two ways to do it now. I'll show you both ways. So you draw your circle. And you'll drag it over it. Actually, I'm, I'm lying, guys. Let me back up here. Use your eraser tool. Sorry. double click it you want it full round and you want the size to be let's just say 52 that's probably pretty close it's damn close actually so we can go a little smaller than that you just want it uh, just on the outside of your circle there your exclusion zone so that's pretty good there and you just get it centered up as best as you can once you have it centered you just click left click once that's it and it deletes everything inside that circle and it creates a nice little round line on the outside of your exclusion zone that you made. Now the only other way that I know how to do this would be let's back up here and let's see if I can do it because I don't know if I remember how to do it so you may only have one way to do it. <laughs> Unlock your templates. Now select your circle you go to object, path, offset path, and let's just do it by 0.5 millimeters. Okay. Let's go. Let's take our offset path, and set it out. Let me see if I remember how to do this now. Select all of it. Unite. Nope. Let's see here. I may not even have to make that. 
Nope. Well, you guys only have one way to do it. Because I don't remember how to do the other way. <laughs> so, use the eraser tool. That's the simplest way I know how to do it. Like I said, just get your roundness out. Get the size right. Line it up. Center it up the best you can. You can actually go smaller than that. Let's go 48 and see what happens. Now that's almost exactly the size of that circle. I believe 49 would get it. That's pretty much it, guys. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And I do this method with every gun. Um, it can be a pain in the ass if anybody knows a better way I'm open to suggestions but as far as your outline goes that works pretty well um, now I will say that when you draw it from an image it's not going to be proportioned to the actual firearm itself so what you'll need to do before you even get to the design and aspect I would suggest making your template and putting it in easy CAD lighten up your uh, gun and sizing it up to your gun. Uh, the easiest way I've found is to measure it with either a tape measure or caliper works best. Um, and just go ahead and size it in here in Adobe Illustrator. You can do that right up here. Width and height um, in millimeters is the easiest, most accurate way to do it since it's small parts. Um, and light it up on your laser, light up everything. And if your circle's off, if these things are off, you can always come back to Adobe and fine tune them. And if these notches are off, what I found works best, say your notch is right here where you designed it, and on the actual gun, it's over here. Well, you can select your direct selection tool. You can select your nodes. You can select one, hold shift, and you can select multiple nodes at a time. Then you can just drag this guy around anywhere you need it to go. So you can move that anywhere. Um, that's the easiest way. And you can do the same thing over here with the square. You just hold shift while you select your nodes. Let's try that again. I grabbed the wrong node. Just hold shift while you select your nodes. And then you can move this guy around anywhere. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Like I said, I've been using this method of drawing templates for a few months now. It's pretty quick. Um, as far as the designing goes, I'm not very keen on that, but as far as getting the design in the template and making it work for EasyCAD, I, I can make do, and that's worked pretty well for me. So um, if you guys have any suggestions to make uh, this content better, this is my first video, so I have no clue what the hell I'm doing, and it's probably extremely awkward, um, shoot me some advice. If you have some advice on how to do these designs better, uh, put it in the comments, let me know. Thanks, guys.